stand up there. Get a picture. Chris, stand up there. Let me get a... Stand over. Let me see the sign. Okay. Look at me. That'd be so funny if you like right Look at me. Look at God, the scene. Yeah, I've seen it like that before. Hang on. Hang on. Here, stay there. Turn around, Chris. You're good. This is so cool. <sighs> Hang on. Cool. There, see there. Look at me. Yeah. Stay there, point at it again. I know. Is it really? How is it? Only a half? A million and a half? Well, that ain't so... No, I understand that, but like a helicopter. They want to have the best they can. What's the what's the fuel like? Like, how much is it to fill the tank up once? Uh, it's about. Uh, you have to use that gas too, right? Aviation fuel. Jet fuel. Oh, jet fuel. Yeah. So that's even more expensive then. So what is it like? Seventy thousand to fill it up once? No, 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 no. It's about twenty a liter. JT. Oh, so it's about uh, six hundred liters, five hundred liters. So. Yeah, so 700 bucks, 600 bucks. Yeah, he's the pilot. Here, turn around. To fly this and he's the pilot. Yeah, I'm Scary. This is a camera. Something that you, you can you can pull. That's right. It's something I'll probably plug in. Plug in the camera, I think. What do you think? So how does the pilot close it? That's supposed to be a bit of a trick to fly it in and out of here, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah. The loader just wouldn't clear the door. It could be a, could be a mistake. Watch out, Chris. Get over there by him. Chris, get over there by him. Hurry up. So cool. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Get over there by it, Chris. Stay in there, Will. Oh, George is in the way.
How cool is this, George? <laughs> got all kinds of cameras. Yeah, oh yeah, well, once in a lifetime yeah. stuff, just about everything, so. I wonder. Yeah, gotta, gotta wear rubber pants in case you pee. <laughs> no doubt. That's what happened. I don't do that anymore. <laughs> what, you got scared? Yeah. Okay, oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, nothing. Uh, the event I tomorrow? think. <laughs> huh? I said I'll be fine, I think. Okay. You should have a nervous Eva. pee before you go. Though. Definitely. Because <laughs> you get up there and you... Okay. Definitely. I love the fact. Even if you don't have Direction. to go. squeeze. Okay. Yeah. Listen to the man. He knows what he's talking about. Yes. Go we'll stand over the toilet now and just push. Four, three, two, zero. Okay. And also to let you know, uh, Minister of Education Gerard Kennedy will be there at twelve fifteen. Yes. Yes. So are we. So. Oh, it is. It is. Well, if you get a chance to watch the news, uh, watch it because it's all over the news tonight. And I'm on it right now. Okay. Perfect. Thank you, Megan. You're an angel. Bye-bye. Crazy. Yeah, you turn the TV on at night and just, just inside.
I want to see it. The corporate community Gave worked to make it happen. And that's why we called you. You guys can help, right? Uh, yeah, sure we can. At TD Waterhouse, we listen so you get the right plan. TD Waterhouse. Trish is really a nice person, too. She really yeah, it's on CP24 really running in the black, dude. Mike Weir, eight shots back at the uh, Pebble Beach Pro. It's got uh, and I to show the, six the, the map of the road changing. One dollar to the Canadian Cancer Society. 24 years later, look what's happened. An incredible story. This year, we have Christopher Knowles, who's starting his walk across Canada. And his dream and wish is to have every Canadian become an organ donor. Now, if Terry Fox can get his way, I'm sure Christopher Knowles can get his way. What do you think of that? I want to uh, mention that I met Chris during my campaign across Canada when I made a stop in Sarnia. And I met a boy who, at first glance, seemed like there was nothing wrong with him, nothing physically wrong with him, no illnesses, because he had this big smile on his face. And he wanted to carry the torch across Sarnia. At the end of the day, he lifted up his uh, shirt, and I, I seen Scars all over his stomach. He's gone through 20 operations so far. And this is the past 12 years. And every operation that he's gone through has been a life-saving operation. And when he showed me his scars, he had a smile on his face. And I thought I just met the most incredible human being in my life when he did that. And he also expressed a wish to me that at that point that one day he wanted to carry the torch across Canada. On my way back, after finishing the walk, I made another stop in Sarnia. And once again, I met Chris. Once again, he had this big smile on his face. And I thought for sure that he had received his liver transplant at that point. And he mentioned that he was still on the waiting list. And I couldn't believe it. And he also mentioned that he still wanted to walk across Canada, and can I be his world manager? After finding out from his parents that they were behind it, and his family, after finding out from his doctor that they were behind it, and after finding out from his community, his school, they were all behind him, because they know his character. This is an amazing young boy. He's got an incredible will to survive, He's not going to let this disease win. And he's doing this walk, not for himself, so he can make a difference in our country. And that's amazing. On January 8th, we had our kickoff in Sarnia. And today we're in Toronto, day 30. And every day he's finishing his walk with a smile. He, he will not show his pain. And if he is in real pain, his dad is going to know about it. I want to take time now to introduce the team that's helping to make this wish possible. On my right, with the camera, is Kelly Knowles. Chris. 
somewhere around here, I don't see them, is our film crew. They're in the back there. They volunteered to come on the road uh, with the uh, team and the campaign for the whole year. And they're hoping to produce an inspiring documentary that ho they're hoping that the whole world's going to witness this documentary. I also want to thank the OPP, uh, who's going to be assisting us throughout the province of Ontario. I also want to thank Chin Radio and TV. Does everybody know Chin? Good, good. They've been helping us for a long time. Presently, they're making announcements in, in 30 different uh, uh, languages throughout the radio stations with Chris's commercial, and they've done so many other things. Also, we like to recognize the uh, Trillium Gift of Life Network, who has been helping us enormously also. They've, they've been uh, helping us in creating posters, supplying us with donor cards, uh, helping us arrange events. Uh, throughout the whole province of Ontario, uh, we're going to be working with them, and, and they're a great representative for the uh, provincial agency. Uh, I also wanted to uh, acknowledge Sundex, uh, who helped us with a uh, great kickoff uh, in Toronto earlier uh, yesterday. And uh, I guess Chris will tell you better than I. I think what Chris is hoping that everybody here will take some time to think about becoming organ donors, and he'll, he'll say it a lot better than I will. But we're hoping that we have time Spend some time with your family, brothers, your sisters, and share your wish with them. I want to thank Blue Collegiate for being very attentive and taking part in this. Thank you. I forgot I'm taking over the uh, mic here. Um, I want to introduce our next guest speaker. and. Uh, he, there was a brief explanation about him uh, by your principal, uh, and I met uh, uh, Mr. Stark uh, about a couple of years ago, uh, and I heard this amazing story, which he's going to explain to you, uh, and he joined me on my last day, and it was an incredible last day witnessing his story and, and having his son with him, and he'll tell you a lot better, but. He's also been uh, helping out in so many other ways with the uh, Toronto Police Department. And, um, I'll bring him up here and he'll, he'll tell his story better than I can. Uh, can you please give uh, Mr. Uh, uh, retired Detective Alistair Stark a warm welcome. things you can 
give. But my message is don't sit back and let other people do it. Because unfortunately, other people are not doing it. There are not enough people doing it, and there are people dying on that list. Now, I'm not saying get out there and sign your card. I'd like everyone in the country to get out there and sign the donor card. I'd like to sign it, but please don't do nothing. Think about it. Talk about it. Discuss it with your family. But don't sit and wait for someone else to do it. Uh, some of you are going to be getting your driver's license or you have it very soon. Part of the Ontario driver's license system is you will receive a donor card with your driver's license. Don't throw it in the drawer. Look at it. Discuss it. Think about it. Do something. Uh, even if it's nothing, but think about it. Don't waste it. Don't waste that card, don't waste that opportunity. Uh, there's a saying in the Toronto Journal says, uh, don't take your organs to heaven. God knows you need them done. We need them down here. Which is true. Uh, and it's a very, very emotional time for anyone when the loss of a loved one. It's a very, very emotional time for anyone when the loss of a loved one. But uh, the, the gift of life is important too. Uh, someone in your family may die, very, very unfortunate. But there's a chance there too. So it's a chance that we don't want to miss. Uh, so discuss it, think about it. And thank you very much. I want to thank the uh, Sheridan Hotel. Uh, as we're moving from community to community, uh, we, we needed help with the hotels, and uh, they were kind enough to uh, provide accommodations while we're here in Toronto. And I also wanted to thank members of uh, the Toronto District School Board. That's your your board, uh, and especially uh, uh, Deborah Kujar and Suzanne Rudu and uh, John Smith and your principal uh, for helping to make this arrangement, Ms. Uh, Mr. Trotter. Our next guest speaker, um, I'm also very proud to say that uh, I've been working with uh, uh, for the past couple of years now. Uh, and he, I, I think his mission is, is pretty well the same as ours, and that's when we decided to become, I guess, uh, for lack of a better word, uh, partners. In, in, he has the same vision, the same dream. He wants to ensure that all Ontarians uh, re receive organ transplant, and his agency is doing everything they possibly can. And uh, I'm very happy and proud to announce the uh, next uh, guest speaker, Mr. Darwin Keeley. Please give him a round of applause. Christopher represents courage, 
and strength. He's 13 years old. He has a dream. He has a wish. But he represents much more. He's here this morning on behalf of 1,758 people who want to enjoy life and enjoy the things that we enjoy. But that's not going to be possible unless there is greater awareness of organ and tissue donation in the province. We ask you, we ask your friends, not only to make a decision about the gift of life, more importantly, to discuss it with your family. You see, only a very few people who died to be donors. Only those who received what we call the brain death, and that's less than 1%. It's usually people who've been in fatal car accidents. That's the largest majority. And it's a very traumatic time for a family to be asked about the option of the gift of life for one of their loved ones. We know that when the wish is shared, almost 80% of the time, the family will say yes. <clears throat> but it's very important. We must sign the card, but more importantly than signing the card is having the discussion with the family. So when you make the decision, communicate it with your family. Look around when you're leaving today. Look at how fortunate you are. Share Christopher's dream. Christopher really wants for him, for those 1,700 people, the opportunity that you are living every single day. Say yes to the gift of life. Have the compassion. Have the courage and have the discussion with your family. Thank you very much. Thank you, Doug. Before I bring Chris up here, I'm going to talk a little bit about him, a little bit more. He loves uh, Blink 182. He loves uh, how many Blink 182 fans? He loves, he loves hockey. Yeah. Hi, my name is Christopher Knowles. I am 13 years old. I need, a, I need a liver transplant. I've been waiting for a liver my whole life. I have a wish. My wish is to walk across Canada to help the 4,000 men women, and children that are in need of an organ. Please tell your friends and family that you want to be a donor. When, when you turn 16 and get your license, please sign those cards. Please don't take your organs to heaven. God knows we need them here. And I'd like to thank the town of Toronto and your collegiate school for attending my press conference. Here because this guy, Chris, is one of my heroes. He's one of my heroes because he decided that he could change the world. He decided that he had power and that he was going to put his power to work for good. You know, the Ministry of Health in Ontario spends $28 billion a year in Ontario trying to keep people healthy. But already we see that in Chris's situation, we haven't been able to help because there are certain things that money just can't buy. And one of those things is a precious organ. And I think that this is a real opportunity to get a demonstration of leadership and learn a little lesson from someone who's young, but whose age is no barrier, because he decided that he was going to take everything that he had and turn it into power. And he delivers us all a very, very powerful lesson. And it's the lesson that says you can change the world in one step at a time. In the introduction, the word honor was used. And in my title is the word honorable. But all of the honor that I feel today is the opportunity to be associated with his good works. And to stand in front of all of you to say that we have a great health care system in our country. That Medicare, our system of public health care, is the best defining value of Canada. 
But each of us has a role to play. Each of us has a role to play in how healthy we are individually and in how healthy we are as a society. We smoke too much. We eat too much. That's my problem. <laughs> Sometimes we don't exercise enough. And there are all things that we can do to help ourselves be healthier. And there are other things that we can do too, and Chris demonstrates that to us. We all take the steps that we can to be a healthier society. We have many great things going for us in Ontario. We've got some challenges too, and some of those problems, healthcare problems, we bring upon them ourselves. So look for the opportunities to be healthier. Help create a healthier society and support the acts of individual leadership by young men like Christopher and follow his lead and find your own power. I'm looking forward to walking a few blocks in the soggy weather of Toronto and I'm, off, I'm looking for the opportunity too to see him at other stops on this courageous journey by a young man who I'm very honored to be here with and a young man that I'm very honored to call a true leader and a hero of mine. Thank you so much. From uh, my boss, Dalton McGinty, Christopher's Wish, Day 30, Toronto, Ontario, February 2004. I'll be happy. From uh, my boss, Dalton McGinty, Christopher's Wish, Day 30, Toronto, Ontario, February 2004. On behalf of the Government of Ontario, I am delighted to extend my heartfelt congratulations to Christopher Knowles on Day 30 of his trek across Canada in support of organ and tissue donation. Christopher, you are a brave and courageous young man, and you have embarked on a truly remarkable journey. Your caring spirit and your commitment to helping others is making a real difference, not only in your community, but across our country. Walking across Canada will be one of the biggest challenges you will face in your life. But I know that with your incredible personal determination, a strength, and strength, along with your trademark smile, you will succeed. Your dedication to raising awareness and money for organ and tissue donation serves as an inspiration to all Ontarians. Take pride in knowing your efforts are sending a powerful message of hope to countless thousands of people waiting for a donor. Christopher, I wish you all the best as you continue your trek. Know that your community, your family and friends, and the people of Ontario, all of them, are behind you every step of the way. This is from my boss, Dalton McGee. Woo! Thank you, Mr. Smitherman. Uh, the principal wants to say a few words to me before it gets back to me, and we're near the end, and I'll make the final comment. Christopher, come here. <laughs> As a principal, you can do that, right? <laughs> you are with, you are in, actually, the largest district school board in Canada, the third largest in North America, and the preeminent board in the world, and we would like you to have a district school board hat. <laughs> you cannot walk when the weather gets a little better without having a nice district school board vest. <laughs> but most importantly, when the weather gets better, the sun shines, you are now an official golden bear. <laughs>
to say, uh, I'm going to get this framed real fast. And this is going to hang in a very prominent place in my office. And I want to invite you back so you can see it there, once you've done a little more walking. <laughs> Thanks very much. Now we're coming to the close at the end of these particular activities. So what we're going to do now, uh, I'm going to have Chris carry the uh, torch. He's going to, I know that there's some students that are talking with Chris, but some are not. Uh, you can get a chance to uh, wish Chris well, well at one of the uh, exit doors here. So if you could start making your way. And we're going to play uh, our, our theme song. Uh, by Elton John, and it's called Circle of Life. Does everybody know that? Okay, so we can play that song now. Hang on, you can pass me right here. What's that? What's that? Thank you, guys. Thank you, man. Up here, soldier. Alright, you want to get in front of me? If yeah, that's okay. I do. We do. Cam has one, Sandy has one, you have one, I have one. That's four. Right now they do.
just from before. Catholic School. The 900 
plus students and staff of our community are proud to represent all of the students and staff of the Toronto Catholic School Board. We are pleased that you have chosen to visit with us. Over my teaching years, I have often seen and learned that young people like yourself, Christopher, have the spirit to do good and great things. It is clear to me that they and you have the strength, determination, courage, and talent to, to accomplish important tasks. Often what is lacking for our young people is the call. Clearly, Christopher, you have been called. This responsibility has been given to you, and you've taken it up along with all of these supporting friends who are with you today. Christopher, in a few minutes, at the end of some other adult conversation here, we're going to ask you to come up and to say a few words to us. And I invite you, when you come up and you look down at this audience of people who I'm very proud of, I want you to take a mental picture of them, take a moment, and keep that in your mind. When there are difficult times on your journey, remember us. Know that our prayers are with you. You will never be alone. We and our faith are now with you. Christopher, you have come to the right place. George, I invite you now to come and uh, lead us through the rest of the show. Thank you. Do we have the uh, students here that uh, walked with Chris this morning? Are they here? Can you please all rise? I really want to thank you for joining Chris and walking with him from Brooklyn. Thank you. Also, I want to thank all the students that are here gathered. I want to uh, thank your uh, Toronto Catholic District School Board. I know it was mentioned earlier, but I do want to get a chance myself to thank uh, uh, the Fodard. Um, she helped uh, organize this and, and put this together. And uh, um, I also want to thank the Bloor Collegiate uh, Institute and the Toronto District School Board. Uh, I, I think what happened here, Mr. Kennedy, was we had both boards working together very harmoniously, and, and it turned out great. So let's give yourselves a round of applause. I also want to recognize a few other members of the team. Um, our assistant road manager for the whole campaign is uh, Billy Aidy, and uh, uh, he lives around the neighborhood, and he's happy to be here. Please uh, stand up, Billy. Also, we have a film crew with us. Uh, to my left is Cam, and Sandra's uh, sitting on the uh, seats there. Uh, they're going to be producing a, an inspiring documentary that we're hoping one day the whole world will be able to see. Uh, can you give them a round of applause? Please? I have some more thank yous to do, but before I do that, um, it's my privilege and honor uh, to introduce uh, Mr. Kennedy. Um, I met Mr. Kennedy, I think it's been about five years now. Um, and at that time, he's, he's been your, also your member uh, uh, of provincial parliament in this area for many years now. Um, sorry, I didn't do my research to see exactly when. Uh, but, and, and he is a hard working person. I met with Mr. Kennedy many times, and he works very received that uh, when he received that vote because I know he's going to do a great job, and I'm so happy on a, during a sh on short notice and during a hectic and busy schedule he was able to attend here so he can talk to the students here. I'm so happy to introduce the honorable member of education, Mr. Gerard Kennedy.
you so much. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. I'm not, I'm not the guest here, though. It, it's uh, somebody else. And uh, it's important, I think, to acknowledge uh, Christopher and his family. Uh, you know, anybody, any one of us could be in this position. Uh, there are sadly too many people uh, in this province right now who are waiting to get on with their lives, uh, who are affected by it. The fact that we don't have an outlook uh, in Canada, in Ontario, where we're really prepared to talk about organ donation and the need for some people to be able to, to continue their lives with the consideration of others. I don't think there's anybody here that would disagree that if a tragedy were to happen that we'd like to see somebody benefit, but to actually make that happen is a lot harder than you think. There's some of the people on stage here that know about that. You should know about George Marcello is that he's a uh, He's a, somebody I like to think of is, is, is also just like the rest of us. And it just happened to him that he got an organ transplant. And rather than simply accept his good fortune and get on with what could have been the rest of his life, he's made this a big part of the rest of his life. He's walked around Canada now once, around this province twice. You know, <coughs> Canada twice. Canada, Ontario, Toronto. He has decided to, to get through to the rest of us. It's not that pleasant a subject. Uh, if you think about a lot of the sources of donations are people who have been involved in tragic accidents and so on. Uh, there are also live donations. We have an example of that on stage here today. People can help with, uh, with an organ transplant under certain circumstances. But it's really just the ability to talk about it. It's, it's part of uh, our human experience. And there's somebody that stepped forward at a pretty young age here, uh, inspired, I think, by, by George's efforts. Uh, to just make us connect a little bit, make us understand. We're all a little bit vulnerable. You know, you guys are an age where you may not think so. Christopher shares that age with you, and his outcome could be different uh, unless something happens in terms of people stepping forward, families helping to make decisions, people being part of a solution for him. I believe there's around 4,000 people in this province who have their lives sort of in a box. And it's amazing to me that Christopher's able to get out and be on the road and do that kind of thing with the kind of health predicament that he has. But for a lot of people, there's even less to their lives. And they're, without putting any drama into it, their lives could be shortened uh, if they don't uh, get a change in the attitude of this province around how people decide to simply do very simple things. Sign their driver's license, uh, sign an organ donation card, make sure their families are aware of it. And I'm sure Christopher and others will, will make you know about that. But as Minister of Education, I'm proud of you at this school for having adapted and, and uh, giving uh, some space and some welcome uh, to Christopher because uh, it's not just the students that are here. And I hope you all go home and talk to your parents and others about this. It's a small thing we all can do. It's a little touch of our humanity to say that we don't want it to happen to anybody in this room. They should be involved in the tragedy. But if there were, and this is part of, I believe, the faith part of it you get in the Catholic tradition, uh, you would like uh, somebody uh, to benefit from that, to pass on some of that life to someone else who might not otherwise have it. And so organ donation is one of the most selfless things that can happen. The tramping around Ontario in the cold and the wet and the sleet uh, is a pretty selfless thing to do too. So uh, it's a great pleasure to be here supporting Christopher and supporting the idea that uh, we all should sign organ donor cards uh, just because we can. Thanks very much. Thank you, Mr. Kennedy. And uh, uh, before uh, you do leave, we hope you can stay as, as long as possible. But before you do leave, um, Christopher is going to present you with something. And uh, 
uh, our uh, next guest uh, is a retired detective, uh, Alistair Stark. Uh, he, he has got a very moving story, um, and, and uh, I, I met the, uh, uh, the uh, retired detective at the Toronto Police Department uh, a few years ago, and I was so amazed by his story, and I'm sure he could tell it uh, better than I can, and uh, if you can give a round of applause for our next guest. checks and just found out he was the same blood type. And there was a quite a few matches um, and he was a, a good match for me. So Stuart sure gave me 65 or probably 60 percent of his liver. It was incredible. Now just a lot of people don't know that that the liver is the only internal organ that can regenerate. So Stuart gave me 60% of his liver. My liver was removed, it was terrible shape. 60% of Stuart's liver was put into mine, and about between four to six weeks later, Stuart's liver had regenerated to full size. It's incredible to even think about that. Uh, it gives you a lot, of, a lot to think about when you're, when you're dying, and you know you're dying. Uh, you have a lot of faith. And it develops a faith in your medical team, and in your God, in your family. Because you've got to face death. You know, you can't just switch off. It's, it's there and it's coming. So, Stuart's liver, or Stuart was a match. And Stuart gave me the gift of life. And I thank him for that. Like, there's no words in the world could ever convey my, my thanks to, to the medical team, my God, Stuart. But the message I'm here today for is, I was on that waiting list for a year. There's a lot of people on that waiting list today, and they are dying on that waiting list, because there's not enough movers around. Our medical system is just the type of system that is a volunteer. Now, obviously, like everyone in the province, everyone in the country, to sign donor cards. One thing worse than not signing the donor card is not even thinking about it. Think about it. Discuss it. Speak about it with your family. Because one of the most important things, if you're going to sign that card, because they have this final say, God forbid, if you should ever die. But if you go, you may be able to leave something behind. But you've got to let your family know. But as I said earlier on, give it some thought. Talk about it. Discuss it. Think about it. Don't sign it if you don't, decide, if, if you don't want to, but at least think about it. Uh, there's a lot of people out there depending on it. Uh, you know, depend on other people to do it. That doesn't always happen. Um, we've got to do it. It's our job. Um, the medical system can only do so much. They need, as my son says, it's, he's referred to as a hero, but uh, he says he doesn't feel a hero. The medical team, they were the heroes. He just supplied the parts. 
kind of amusing. But uh, basically, that's my story. Um, and my appeal to you is think about it. You're all in Asia now where you know, driving licenses are starting to come out. And on the interior driver's license systems, um, you also receive a, a card, your donor card, um, your uh, health card. Um, think about signing that. But don't just put it in the drawer and forget about it. Think about it, discuss it, decide what you want to do, but do something. Even if it's nothing, but think about it. And I'm alive because of it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Stark. Um, along with that, I also want to uh, thank the uh, Toronto uh, Police Department uh, for uh, providing an excellent escort this morning. And uh, also the uh, Sheridan Hotel for helping us out uh, with accommodations. Our uh, next guest speaker uh, is Mr. Darwin Keeley, and he is the uh, CEO of Trillium Gift of Life Network. That's the uh, provincial agency here in Ontario uh, that coordinates uh, activities for organ and tissue donations. And uh, I uh, met uh, Darwin now, I think, about a couple of years now, a year, a year and a half, a year and a half. Yeah, and I was very excited when we when we first met. We hit it off, and uh, since then, uh, we've basically become partners. And uh, um, he's got a few uh, important words to share with you too. Could you please give a round of applause for him? Thank you. Well, we at the, the Trillium Gift of Life Network are very pleased and proud to be partners with George Marcello and the Step by Step Organization as we share a cause, and that's the cause of building awareness for organ and tissue donation. As the minister pointed out, you know, there's a large number of people in Canada on the waiting list. As we sit here this afternoon, in Ontario alone, there are 1,758 people on that waiting list. Many, many not well enough to travel to be at home. The unfortunate thing is, as we reach the month of December this year, 120 of those people will die while waiting for an organ. The number, total number of donations in Ontario last year were 143. So you can see the vast gap between the need and the gifts. You know, as I look around and I look into your faces, I see health, I see energy, I see good fortune. But not everyone in this province today are sharing your gifts. So we're here today with Christopher Knowles because we're inspired by his decision to do something about the challenge. We're here because we're motivated by his courage and by his strength. You know, Christopher has a dream. He has a wish. He wants to experience your good health. He wants to be able to, think, to do the things that you do and that you take for granted. As has been pointed out, the whole question or quest of organ donation awareness is to ensure that you talk to your families. You see, at the time of an accident, some people say, well, why is the supply of gifts so small? It's because there's only an organ donation available in about 1% of deaths in Ontario. It's really only when one experiences what we call brain death, usually result of a, a, a traumatic accident, a car accident, and so forth. So only a very small number potentially be donors. And it's a very traumatic time for families to deal with the loss of a loved one and a decision. But what we do know is we deal with families on a regular basis. If they know the wishes of their loved one, those wishes are honored. And the legacy they leave is a gift of life 
two or three or four or five people. So it's important to talk to your family and let them know what your wishes are. You know, we really want to thank the students, the teachers, at Bishop, uh, Bishop Morocco Thomas Burton School for your commitment, for, your, for taking the time to support Christopher, to hear his message. You know, it's, it's really very simple. It's about the gift of life. We ask you to think about it. We ask you to tell your families. And someone, somewhere, one day in Ontario may benefit by your courage and your compassion. Thank you. Thank you, Carmen. Um, our next guest, I uh, met recently, uh, yesterday, um, and uh, they, they helped put together an event for Chris, and he was a uh, judge at a chili eating contest. Did you eat that chili, by the way, uh, Chris? Oh, okay, he ate all of it, he said. Um, and uh, as we're moving along, we, we are trying to build as many uh, partnerships and, and uh, bridge ourselves with many groups and organizations. Um, and after I met Paul yesterday, it seemed very promising that uh, our two groups can come together too. And isn't that amazing when you can come together on a common cause and, and work together and, and produce good results? Um, and that's what we're hoping to find. Uh, can you please give a warm welcome uh, to CEO uh, Paul Hagel from Sunda. My aunt died six years ago of brain aneurysm. Um, I learned at the funeral that her heart and her kidneys went and saved two lives. So, I was really inspired. I realized at that point that um, anybody can be a hero. I mean, imagine saving somebody's life. I signed my donor card at that point and I told my family that that's what I wanted to do. You may wonder why a company like Sundex is, um, is involved in, in something like this. Well, you now you know why that touched me. Sundex is involved because every year we said, you know, we're not big like IBM, we can't do events. And every year we said the same thing. Finally, I realized you don't have to do something big. You have to do something. Um, I had done my part, but raising awareness and getting everybody else to participate is a little bit more. In 30 years, the gap between donors and, and people waiting for organs will certainly be probably gone. I mean, as more people become aware of this, it's going to be people dying because of liver failure, people dying because of, of heart failure is maybe going to be a thing of the past. Imagine that. But right now, there are people waiting. I know you've heard it before. But that's what my point is. So I urge you guys to talk to your family and sign your organ donor card. Um, just so you know a little bit about what happened yesterday, it was a, it was a chili contest, which um, you probably imagine I got the idea from The Simpsons. So um, it was real hit. Um, the purpose of the, uh, of the chili cook-off was to get 1,700 people in Toronto to sign their organ donation, don donation card and talk to their loved ones. Um, we handed out, I, I urged everybody there not to take a card unless they were going to. I realized at that point that um, anybody can be a hero. I mean, imagine saving somebody's life. I signed my donor card at that point and I told my family that that's what I wanted to do. You may wonder why a company like Sundex is, um, is involved in, in something like this. Well, you now you know why that touched me. Sundex is involved because every year we said, you know, we're not big like IBM, we can't do events. And every year we said the same thing. Finally, I realized, you don't have to do something big. You have to do something. Um, I had done my part, but raising awareness and getting everybody else to participate is a little bit more. In 30 years, the gap between donors and, and people waiting for organs will certainly be probably gone. I mean, as more people become aware of this, it's going to be...
people dying because of liver failure, people dying because of, of heart failure is maybe going to be a thing of the past. Imagine that. But right now, there are people waiting. I know you've heard it before. But that's what my point is. So I urge you guys to talk to your family and sign your organ donor card. Um, just so you know, a little bit about what happened yesterday. It was a, it was a chili contest, which um, you probably imagine I got the idea from The Simpsons. So um, it was real hit. Um, the purpose of the, uh, of the chili cook-off was to get 1,700 people in Toronto to sign their organ donation, don donation card and talk to their loved ones. Um, we handed out, I, I urged everybody there not to take the card unless they were going to sign it. There's no pressure. Same here. Take the card if you're going to sign it. And we don't have the final numbers, but um, the folks at Trillium Gift for Life Network said that they handed out a few hundred cards, which wasn't as many as I had hoped. Um, and we're still waiting for the downloads on the internet. Um, that's a small token. It, it's almost just a gesture compared to what Chris's goal is, to have everyone in Canada sign their organ donor card. But we're trying to do our part. I can't tell you how proud I am of my aunt and her family. Um, and I can't tell you how proud I am of, of Chris. I mean, when I was 13, I don't think I would have even thought of walking across Canada. I don't know if I could do it now. But, I mean, what a fantastic idea. And what a, what a great way to raise awareness. And it's really fantastic you guys get behind it. Thanks. Thank you, Paul. Um, we still got Mr. Kennedy in the house. <laughs> Thank you. He's on a really tight schedule. I'm glad he's hanging around. Okay, so are you guys ready for our star? Yeah. You? Yeah. Come on, let's hear it. You know the best is always at the last, right? Yeah. And patience is a, a virtue. And, and that's what everybody's waiting for, is to see Chris, right? Yeah. Hear him talk, right? Yeah. And, and, and he's also available, girls. <laughs> uh, I, wanna, I wanna ask the audience, I wanna ask the audience if they remember Terry Fox. How many, how many people in the audience remember Terry Fox? Oh, quite a few, yeah. Yeah. Well, he, he, he left quite an impression on all of us. Do you remember his dream? I don't know if your parents told you about it, or if you heard about it in movies or other things that you read from Terry Fox. When he started his walk across Canada uh, in 1980, he had a dream. His dream was to donate, uh, have every Canadian, he was asking every Canadian to donate one dollar to the Canadian Cancer Society. And, and look what he's achieved 24 years later. Christopher Knowles has a dream. And he started his dream January 8th of this year from his hometown, Sarnia. His dream, his wish, is to have every Canadian become an organ donor. He is not going to settle for one person not becoming an organ donor. He's saying, I want to see everybody become an organ donor and nothing short of that. And he's on day 30 today. He's the most determined boy that I've ever seen, the most courageous boy. Um, he doesn't whine. He likes eating a lot. Uh, he, he loves uh, his Xbox. Uh, he loves Blink-182. He, he loves uh, hockey. And He's right here, introducing Christopher's wish. I just want to...
Um, hi, my name is Christopher Nolz. I am 13 years old. I need a liver. I've been waiting for a liver transplant my whole life. I have a wish. My wish is to walk across Canada to help the 4,000 men, women, and children that are in need of an organ. Please tell, take this home and tell your parents and family that you want to be a donor. When you get your license at age 16 or 18 or whatever it is, please sign those cards. Please don't take your organs to heaven. God knows we need them here. And I'd like to thank the town of Toronto and your school for coming out today. Thanks. Billy and Diane. Thank you. 
We'd just like to thank all of all of our honorable guests that we be here to share their endeavors with them. We'd like to give them a hand of applause.